Okay, okay. Um, let's check the event. Um, okay, I guess if I must say something that I got a book, don't know where. Read after confirming, you teleport to another area. Oh, just like that. The current quest and exploration progress will be interrupted. Okay, I'm not really doing anything. Do I have the book here? Uh, uh, no, I guess it would be up there. Okay, but I almost said I got a book, but I, I thought that would be an item. Uh, okay. Just like that. We're in get inside the book. I think Pamela was complaining that we wanted her to fly into a painting the other day. Hey! Wake up! Hey! Mm -hmm. ah, you're finally awake! Paima was worried sick! What happened? No idea. Paima just woke up and... Then we were here! Oh, Paimon's head is all dizzy. Mm. Hey, what's that? Oh! No idea! Oh, nice! Oh. But that would be nicer for... The dialogues I miss are actually during... Gameplay. And not voiced. So they... That won't be there. And what's that? Oh, oh, that would be good for thumbnails, if I remember to use that. The scenery here looks different too. Oh, what should we do, huh. Traveler? Please don't tell Paimon someone abducted us and brought us to some strange place that we can never leave. Well, we can probably leave, but the previous part is probably what happened. Come down, let's take a look first. <sighs> You're right. Better to think of this as the beginning of a new adventure. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Thank goodness you're still here. If Paimon woke up alone, she probably would be trembling in a tree hollow. Oh. What's that? I didn't even realize oh, on the screen. Path for because... now. We might be able to meet someone and figure out what this place is all about. Oh, that is moving. <laughs> oh, it has some depth to it. That's weird. Okay, we got teleport already. Let's look at the area. Oh, there are quests already. There. Simula Simulanka. Okay, okay. Uh, is there something to collect? Uh, yeah, probably. of peace. Traveler! Did those plants by the road look weird to you? It almost looked like they were made of paper. Yeah, we're probably to have a book. Uh, and those two frogs over there? Yeah, they look like pieces of origami. Oh, by the shade of a lotus leaf stream! Don't tell me you forgot how to jump! I... I didn't forget, Firecracker. I'm just... not sure if what I remember is correct. <laughs> Next thing you know, you'll have forgotten how to sing, much less notate a score. You still remember why we call you Stream, don't you? Yeah, because I've got a great singing voice. Although these days, the name seems more ironic than anything. 
Not just a great voice, one that evokes the gentleness of early morning dewdrops flowing into a spring. So cheer up and make the jump over. If you're still unsure, just use that roll of magic thread. I won't laugh, I promise. Now don't tell me you've forgotten how to use that as well. I haven't forgotten everything, Firecracker. Your name, for instance. It's kind of hard to forget that you're named after your fiery temper. Now do me a favor and pipe down for a second. I'll be right over. <laughs> that was a you weird exchange. You saw it too, right? Paimon's not seeing things, is she? <laughs> I saw some talking paper frogs. We have a paper framed with us. Uh, the paper frogs jumped away. This place is getting more confusing by the second. Anyway, I... Uh, why don't we go after those two... Frogs. They didn't look evil or anything. Plus, they might be able to help us out. <laughs> oh, those three look real. Oh. Oh, A stroke of good luck. And a very welcome one. Can you... Ah, uh, I thought it would keep going like the... Oh, can I? Uh. <laughs> Maybe I could keep following that like the Tanuki. Uh, I, I lost the frog. Uh. No, that's a different frog. Uh, ah, okay. Guess we're not catching up to those frogs. They were so fast. Paimon no. couldn't even tell where they hopped off to in the end. I wasn't paying attention, actually. Uh, excuse me, honored travelers. Did you come from the Cliff of Prophecy, perchance? <laughs> the, the chubby paper hamster just talked. Chubby? Who are you calling chubby? <laughs> I've just got a slightly thicker layer of paper on me, that's all. <clears throat> uh, allow me to uh, introduce myself. Uh, my name is Armand, and I'm an elder of the Forest of Blessings. Uh, I've been waiting here for the Hero of Prophecy to arrive. <laughs> Traveler, could you pinch Paimon just to make sure she's not still dreaming? I think you need pinching as well, but we could pinch her anyway. You're pinching, you say? Well, I can help with that. Although you'll have to get a little closer. My arms are rather short. Ah, uh, that's all right. We just need a minute to collect ourselves. Okay, let's think things through. <laughs> we know for sure this isn't the world we're familiar with. The talking paper animals and all the paper trees and plants make that pretty clear. The hero from another world, supported by their companions, shall restore peace to the world. That is what the prophecy says. Yeah, sounds like me, all right. The prophecy. This <laughs> world. Me. I, I completely forgot to introduce you to this world, didn't I? Oh, and here I am, getting all excited by the arrival of the hero. You'll have to excuse me. This old brain isn't what it once was. All shell and... No nut. <sighs> oh, well, perhaps my once glossy paper has faded past the point of no return. It's okay, really. You can just tell us all about this world now. Oh, let me think. Hmm, where, where should I even begin? I've pretty much forgotten everything that happened in the past. Uh, right. I, I believe the story circulating along the pulp of this forest goes as follows. A, a long, long time ago, three goddesses created this world and named it Simulanka. The goddess of creation, who presides over matter and magic, created the mountains and rivers and gave us life. Her powers also paved the way for Simulanka to exist in numerous worlds. After the Goddess of Creation came the Goddess of Prophecy, with dominion over the stars and the course of fate itself. She induced the sky to spin and the earth to move. 
Even to this day, her, her statue still stands tall at the highest point of Constellation Metropole. The final goddess was the goddess of fate. She who reigns over all treasured tales and dearest wishes. She bestowed upon us the fierce and everlasting feelings of love and hate, and showed us the meaning of death and hope. Wow, they all seem super impressive. Sounds like they really did a lot. Of course. All new residents of Similanka come to the forest to thank the goddess of creation for founding this world and travel to Constellation Metropole to witness the divinations of the goddess of prophecy's numerous oracles. After that, they make their way to the end of the world and tell the goddess of fate about their most cherished dreams. <sighs> well, at least that's how it used to be. Uh, how it used to be? Did something bad happen? You mentioned something about restoring peace to this world. Oh, yeah. That has to do with the hero you're waiting for, right? Yes, yes this old, old brain of mine may have forgotten many things, but I will never forget the day mm -hmm. the evil dragon descended upon our forest. It came down from the skies in an ominous black mist and ravaged our homeland. Its gigantic footprints can still be seen in the kingdom of breezes and bells. We're incredibly fortunate that no one was hurt. Hmm. Sounds terrifying! The terror doesn't stop there, I'm afraid. Ever since the attack, the calligraphy tavern in the forest has been closed. No one knows why, but it's a catastrophe of the highest order for us, forest dwellers. Uh, a catastrophe of the highest order? All because a tavern closed? If we were talking about Mondstadt here, Paima might understand, but is it really all that serious? Good goddess of creation above. We'd take even the greatest flood over the closure of the tavern. Oh, Wet paper will dry paper. out with time. Fallen trees can be restored. Uh. But the calligraphy tavern is the only source of the magic tonic that sustains all creatures in the forest. Magic oh, how did they make that? Magic tonic. It was gifted to the forest by the goddess of creation herself. A special potion that helps us maintain our vitality. What happens if stop drinking it? Well, our bodies will gradually crumple and become brittle until they eventually disintegrate entirely. Uh. Our colors will fade and we'll start to lose our memory until we can't even remember uh. our own names. Uh, but wait, Grandpa Almond, does Grandpa. that mean you've already... Oh, I'm afraid so. The color has all but completely faded from my paper. To be honest, all I really remember is that I'm supposed to wait here for the Hero of Prophecy. But I've already forgotten who gave me that order to begin with. Then we've got to act fast! How can we help? Oh, brave Pixie. May the Goddess of Fate reward you and your friend for your kindness. This is the first time they could call her a Pixie. You're the heroes I've been waiting for all along. Um, not yeah. sure how we know that. Plus, we can't even remember how we got here, so it's not looking too promising. They don't remember opening the book. We were just following the road and then ended up here. We're trying to find our way back to our world. Well, uh, this is turning out to be quite the conundrum for old Armand Brain here. <laughs> the prophecy never mentioned anything like that. Uh, for now, why don't you come with me to the Hut of Blessings? Our forest fairy lives there. Maybe she'll know what to do. Whoa, a forest fairy? Like one that knows magic? Oh, he has a little bit of Oh, color. you betcha. <laughs> She's prophesied to join the hero on their journey. Well, then she sounds like exactly the kind of person we need. Please lead the way, Grandpa Almond. Virtual? Oh. Uh, oh. that metal over there.
here looks pretty strange. Well, that's what the calligraphy tavern looks like. Now it's lost all of its color. Uh. Huh? What? Wait, who blocked the exit? It's so dark. Oh. Can you made it out? Oh, I need to open the map afterwards. Huh, cute. There's a tavern. Uh, it's flattened underneath here. Uh, I think this will open up like a pop up book. Ah, I do have to cross the water. I thought there was a road. Here? Uh. Uh, this is the place. If you could just wait a moment, the hmm. fairy should be... in here. Maybe calm down be first. Uh, uh, sorry. Sorry. So Nilu is the forest fairy? Well, you certainly look the part. Your outfit slowly is perfect for you. It's a bit like San <laughs> uh, Thank you. Uh, to be honest, I'm still getting used to it. It's the weirdest thing. I remember I was reading a book at the Grand Bazaar, and uh. then I guess I must have fallen asleep at some point because, well, then I woke up dressed like this. Well, no and change in my dream, someone spoke to me. They said, "You are the fairy of the Forest of Blessings. Now go, save the forest with your magic." At first, I thought this whole world was just part of the dream, but no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't seem to wake up. I couldn't find anyone I knew from the real world either. Sounds similar to what happened with us. We also have no idea how we got here. Anyway, sorry for my reaction back there. I got a bit too excited when I saw you two. It's okay, we totally understand. We were looking for a way out too. At least we know we're not alone. Oh, blessed be the goddess of fate above. You're already friends with the fairy of the forest. Grandpa Almond, thank you so much for bringing my friends here. Could you let the others know I'm coming? I'll head over right away. Uh, of course, leave it to me. Hey ho, pistachio. <laughs> Today truly is a blessed day. Wow, Nilu. Looks like you made short work of getting to know the locals. Well, when I arrived here yesterday, Grandpa Omen told me all about the state of this world. Since they think of me as their forest fairy, I just felt like I had to try to help them. Oh, so you mean like using some kind of forest magic to repair the tavern? Unfortunately, I don't know how to use the magic of this world. I've tried using my vision, but it doesn't seem to work here. Water. If the books stored in this hut are this anything to go by, this seems to be the place where the goddess of creation first made the townspeople of this forest. She folded the pages of books into small origami animals, gave them life with her magic, and with time, that's how the forest of blessings took shape. Hmm. Maybe one of the books here could teach us how to use magic. I read them all, but only found one reference to magic. The incantation, Abracadabra, means hmm. to create what I say. This is a world made up of words where fantastical powers can be wielded by all. Okay, so basically everyone in this world can use magic? That's nice, but still kind of vague. Yeah, 
From the other books I read, it seems like this goddess really likes to play fast and loose with the details. So, what should we do now? Um, didn't you say you were going somewhere, Nilu? Oh, yes. I was going to help some of the other residents of the forest. They've been busy making preparations to reopen the tavern, so I thought I could help out. Got it! Guess we should just focus on what we can do for now. This whole thing is making me pretty nervous, actually. It's like I've been pushed on stage without being taught the choreography. Since I'm already wearing the costume, though, I might as well try to play the part. It's what a professional dancer would do. And who knows? Maybe I'll find my own magic along the way. All I can do is try, right? At least you're optimistic. We'll be there too. Well, thank you. Then let's go. Hmm. Uh, so I had to retreat. Metropole Trials. War of Flurry. Okay, brave not early winds. In the first blast, and use a particular passionate flying squirrel. Coach Quest. Hmm. Of the devils. Okay. Good shelf. Forms me something interesting. Ah, there's a new star seal coin, a custom coin. This third enemy carving is exquisitely car crafted. It seems to carry the blessing of the one who made it. And who knows, perhaps good things to come to come when you use it. You can use to obtain fairy tale figures from fantastic fabricators in the summertime scales and tales event. Okay, but well let's go to the one. Oh, it's right next to the other one. Uh, alright. What about here? Oh, Fonta? No. Churi? Welcome, honored guests. Welcome to the Force of Blessing. Oh. Are you here? For, ah, okay, I think that will be uh, helpful here. Are you here for a jaunt or are you here to see the Rainsong Pond jumping competition? Whatever the case may be, you may enjoy your time here. Do remember to avoid the giant dragon who can come knocking at any time. Don't let him get in the way of your travels. Truth be told, I wanted to give him some paper models. thought it might improve his mood. Perhaps keep him from blowing my shelves over again. Uh, but he doesn't seem the least bit interested in listening to me. Simply flying off as it pleases. Just as always. Oh my, I forgot to introduce you to my masterpiece. As well as this outstanding frame. Please look over here and have a look at this fantastical fabricator. Every paper model I've made up to this moment is inside. I've walked, well, jumped across the entire world and made countless friends in my journey to craft them. For example, the flying squirrel Clench, can, who would often drag me into wind currents to try flying, David, who loves papers, uh, paper models as I do, and of course, Alof, or ever the stone faced fellow. They were all generous enough to let me make paper models based off them, that I might share these interesting toys with everyone. Alright then, grab these star seal coins, uh, consider them a welcome gift, then stuff them into the fabricator and finally turn this handle. Uh, let's see what the dewdrops shall bring you today. Once you use these coins up, though, you have to find a way to get some more on your own, if you want to continue turning the fabricator handle that is. As to just how to get more, well, I guess those good friends of mine, I'm sure they'll have an idea or two. After you get the present, you can exhibit them on the shelf behind me. Ah. Uh, strictly speaking, it is a, 
it is the shelf that was the true impetus of my creation of the fantastical fabricator and paper models. But the telling of the tale is no simple thing. Should you, should you so wish, I would be glad to share it with you. But for now, just turn fabricator up. Dreamy dewdrops above, willing. May you gain the gift you desire, and may your mood be uplifted for the rest of the day. I hope it's only change which order I get them, not if I get repeated once. In the summer time chaos in this event, you can use the star sail coin gained from game modes within mosaic of moments to create many model figures in figure fabrication. For the figurines related to each region, team can be mounted on the region's good shop. Ah, so there are more. During the event, these figurines can be exchanged uh, with and given to your friends. Okay, so it's probably all chains. Oh, no, no, I actually don't want to talk to you. Uh, no, I'll, I'll see those things some other time. Replications remaining to you. Is that counting everything or just this? Ah, it's one for creation five. Okay. Ah, good. I can know everything I'm missing. Force of Blessing, Constellation Metropole, Titanium Mines. Ah, okay. Yeah, we can change with other people, so. That should be fine. Uh. For now. Oh. Uh. That's in the right way. I hear the princess is looking for a garden. Am I supposed to bring something here? The prize of the kingdom of breeze and bells are the pliers. Get close and use the interact button to work together with them and direct them through the garlands. Holding the attack button while in joint cooperation will display the fly path. Release the attack button and the flying squirrel will attempt to pass through the garland along the path you indicated. The flying squirrel will immediately turn back after reaching the end of its fly path. They will only stop mid-air and await your use of the attack button to summon them back after they have hit flower balls. Ah, climb! Oh. Okay, I should have glided from above there. Playing class lesson one. That's tough. Oh, I throw them like a boomerang.
Huh? Ah, okay. gets to stake their claim. Seems fair. Flowers that have curled in on themselves for a nice snap. Uh, they will awaken and open after being hit by a flying screw impact. As character attacks and other shocks. Having been so rudely awakened, they will show their immense displeasure by creating a current that can move garlands. Let's try waking those fierce flowers. First to find oh. gets to stake their claim. Oh, Seems fair. There. Uh, hang on, I'm supposed to. I think I'm supposed to go down there. What is that? Uh. Ah, oh, it's a llama. Two more brave warriors step up to the plate. Are you here to play Bore of Flurry? Uh, come then, right this way. I'm looking forward to witnessing your unmatched powers of flight. Oh, cool it. I haven't said anything yet. One needed keep cool to fly. Dear guests, not at all. Taco Head will merely blow your sense of the wind. Only one who faces the while the wind utterly unprepared may uncover their true potential. That doesn't sound right. Flying squirrels nowadays are far too timid. They are utterly forgotten. They've utterly forgotten the lessons taught by the brave naturally wind. They stand in safe spots and they claim the courage to of leaves that dance in the wind, yet are far too frightened to leap into its embrace themselves. How can you protect the kingdom alongside her highness? Who is her highness? If things keep going this way, ludicrous, ludicrous I say. Man, this flying screw sure is an energetic type. Looks like he really loves flying. And that's why I found myself a passage with especially intense wind currents and set up all sorts of devices inside it. Only the bravest, the boldest and most bellicose in flight shall best its course. Do you have the required courage, dear guests? I'll have a right go at it. Uh, got other things to do now. Let's do. Excellent, follow me then. The passage is not far from here. Uh, okay. Uh, page one. Okay. Uh, hello there. Heard from my wing riders. I thought it would take me there. The way you said. 
about the win path? Well, I did specifically select them for their particular intensity. I believe that one must face the fierce flurry without practice or preparation to best hold one's art of flight, to best uncover one's true potential. Find scores on days and the team, they are totally forgotten lessons, since it's spots and the kind of version leaves, same thing. Come down to the kingdom, Shamari really watched and applaud helplessly as our princess fights our battles. How reasonable. It is a duty to defend the kingdom, mastering flight our obligation. Uh, the safety of the realm is intimately tied to each and every one of us. Still, um, I wonder if any of my king will understand these words. They likely think me some obstinate idiot. No matter, once my techniques have been refined, I shall leave them all speechless. When the time comes, I shall once again tell them of my philosophy. About the brave northerly wind. You wanna hear that tale? Sure, but first let me take a moment to put my thoughts together. The story is well known in our kingdom and there have been many spins of the narrative. But most will begin this way. Long, long time ago, there was a bit of northerly winds learn, learning to blow across the, all things. Amongst the, those northerly winds, there was one who was especially timid. Whenever he blew across the land, he was always scared stiff. And blew the flowers down, busted the leaves of blister, and swept heads of the heads of passerby. My goodness, I even left the lovely lake all astir. They passed, years went by, this north wind never again dared to blow forth, and the lane was he was charged with fell into an awkward windless top. Keep listening. And so fra his friends, the flying squirrels, came to him and asked, Why do you never come out anymore? Have you fallen ill? The North Wind said sadly, I ruined everything. I brought nothing but sadness and sorrow, and the ruination of such good things. No, you haven't, his friends cried out in surprise. You've helped us soar in the skies. You've carried rainwater to distant places and delivered petals and seeds to their places. I know uh, this is my duty, but I want to avoid the mistakes I make. He shook his head. There must be a better way to finish my job. Better than what I'm doing now. And listening. His friends looked at each other, knowing that the North Wind was shrouded in self doubt and anxiety. But for their friends' sake, they needed to come up with something. And so they told the North Wind to blow upon them once more as it pleased. And this time they didn't they take care of everything on the ground. And thus, the sudden north wind set out, still half mired in doubt. Once more did he blow across the plains, through the forests and over the lakes. As he looked down, he saw his friends waving at him. All was in order, with not the slightest spot of a mess. Only then did the north wind see clearly that the petals they had blown away were filled with tiny seeds, and that new shoots could grow only after the withered yellow leaves had been blown down. And as for that hat, well, if nothing else, he succeeded in warning the rushing gentleman that the weather had shifted, and with it, so should his choice of clothes. When he returned to his dwelling, the north wind expressed gratitude to his friends. Without their support, he surely would have caused a disaster. But they just left, saying that they hadn't done anything differently from before. The North Wind had so wished for perfection that the slightest mistake would all but blind him. Their mistakes are normal, nothing is truly perfect. A North Wind seeking to carry out its duty should never have been so focused on avoiding making any mistakes at all. Instead, he should have worked hard to, toward his true goal, to help plant so seeds far upfield, to lift the burden from the back of the trees, to carry rainwater along, and to remind people to perhaps wear a little too less. Only a north wind who completes their work in, in such a manner might be called brave. 
Does this story have anything to do with what you were saying before? That sounds like a different kind of courage. Uh, it is absolutely related. It is fear of mistakes that holds the flying squirrels of the Arcano back from flight. They fear being embarrassed, fear missteps, fear accidentally crashing into something. That could be little. Just like how the North Wind was terrified of blowing it. Absolutely ridiculous. The only thing they should fear is the inability to master flight. Uh, I really sh should have made them reread Brave North Wind. You know what? I should just print some new copies and hand them out. Can you guys print stuff here? Is it a bit rich to print stuff? On paper? You want to play Grab the Berries? No, let's see the, the thing here. Wait, what? Oh. Yeah. Uh, and you? Okay, where did you come here? I here to take the trials as well. Not sure. It's a gift for guests. Uh, you heard the princess, please take it. A stroke of good luck, and a very welcome one. What terrifying foot footprints. Mike? This guy is so nice. Ah, uh, there's a quest there. No, uh, well, my goal. Uh, what's that? Uh, it isn't that. Okay, but I have to help. Ah! Ah, so it will another thing already. Uh. Oh. Okay. Come on, they say help Nilo. And then they show up this page. I thought that was a hatch tool for the main quest. Those, what do I have to do to unlock them? Uh, page 2, okay, then. Ah, page 2 as well. I thought that would be page 3. Um, ah, I'm here already. Let's check that. Let's go back first. Ah, there's a full print of the dragon. Oh, down there, please help. Do you need a hand? Help us. Oh. Huh. Uh, we've been stuck down here for a long time. Let me mark those things. Giant shadow suddenly fell upon us. It was so terrifying. A duel is a battle of wills, and the sword an extension of the duelist's spirit. If your heart recoils in fear, 
Then your sword may as well be in its scabbard, because you will not wield it effectively against your foe. Can we see other footprints? Hmm. No, it seems to be just the one. I'll probably need a couple of days to clear everything around. There he shows. Oh, the birth for the mode you have to move and shoot various targets to score points. Lock all targets will be maxed out, and if you crash directly into targets, a certain amount of points will be deducted. Okay, I have to shoot them, but not crash on them. Shooting will consume energy, and energy recovers gradually, so take care to control your shots. In this game mode, you can use two different buttons to use two different fire modes. Speedy shots, when held, you can fire continuously. Charge shot after charging by holding for some time. Release to unleash fortify. Release to unleash fortify floater targets can only be destroyed by those of oh, these shots. Slime supreme targets can take many hits, then they will change after each time they are hit, making them difficult to in heat. Use speed shots to do them effectively. Oh, start away. That's my energy. Oh, there. They just opened the glider. To make more a bit more sense. And then we could just say it was doing like in the, that first time facing the valley. Kinda cool, but it is kinda slow. Could be a bit more Star Foxy. Let's select stage. Now I need to complete that one. Yeah. Uh, where am I? What was that? Ah. Uh, Oh, it's close to here, so let's go there. Wow, I didn't notice I had everybody there Shoot. here. Uh, yeah, let's check it. <laughs> it's a battle. Uh, okay, let's check the quest. Because I probably shouldn't fight stuff the way I'm right now. 
Ah, it's slower. Okay, so. Ah, we have touched the lemon. Dear Citrus, please tell me you're joking. We can't have you out of commission with the tavern about to reopen. No. Okay. I'm sorry, Grandpa Almond. It's the truth. I was just too excited for the reopening and must have fallen asleep in an awkward position. Grandpa Almond, we're here to help! Oh, hazelnuts on high. You could not have come at a better time. Uh, please allow me to introduce you. This is the bartender of the Calligraphy Tavern, Miss Citrus. She's so tall. Uh, Miss polite? Citrus is supposed to add all kinds of delicious fruits to the magic tonic. Her additions are what turn it into the finest brew in the land. She's indispensable to the operation of the tavern. I appreciate the kind words, Grandpa Almond, but... Uh, my neck. Are you all right? Ah, uh, terrible timing. Getting a kink in my neck at a time like this? Could you give my tail a little twist? Hmm? That should help free up the movement in my neck. I would do it myself, but I can't reach my own, and Grandpa Almond is too old and as light as a feather. The neck and tail are connected? Of course they're connected. <laughs> just like how you can't have a rainbow without rain. <clears throat> anyway, you just need to position me at the right height to pick the fruits, and then put them in the barrel over there. Hmm? What? Do you have the pad? Uh, press the interaction which put the magic thread on the paper alpacas. Ah, it's an alpaca. And back and help her. While connected, you can move and adjust the neck height uh, of the paper alpaca in the direction it's facing. While connected, press the attack button at the correct position. So. The payroll pack may retain the needed mixology materials. Hmm, this doesn't seem quite right. Come on, those hamsters could place. The fruits inside the barrel. Perfect. <sighs> My neck feels much better. So there really is some kind of connection between your neck and tail. Thank you so much, everyone. I can rest easy now, knowing the drinks at the tavern will be just as wonderful as before. That's another problem solved! Well, Traveler, I think that's the first one. We should make our way to the next location. These items are unclaimed. We may take them without controversy. Uh... It's right next to the thing. I can't. Did I pass by there? Wait, getting out. here and she brought her companions grandpa almond was right they do look promising hello there everyone i heard you were working on the piping for the calligraphy tavern is there anything we can do to help oh we wouldn't dream of troubling you with our petty problems my lady don't you worry we have it all under control ah uh, you sure about that because from where paimon's floating the piping is looking pretty chaotic Ah, yes. We have my careless friend to thank for that. He promised we could leave the pipe connecting to him, and... Well, the results speak for themselves. 
Uh, hey, I just wanted to inspect each pipe. This is the network the magic tonic has to flow through. I was just trying to be thorough, so I... Uh, I disassembled the whole thing. Yeah, and now you've forgotten how to put the thing back together. <sighs> Have you been eating too many nuts again? Because you are what you eat. <laughs> Please don't fight. I know everyone wants the tavern to reopen as soon as possible so that the force can return to normal. So, why don't you let us help out? Yeah, we're here anyway, so we might as well be helpful. We just need to reassemble these pipes, right? Well, if you're offering... Basically, the pipes need to be connected properly to allow the magic tonic to flow through. If you put the wrong pipe in the wrong place, the tonic will get stuck halfway. Attention to detail is key. Says the guy who messed up the whole thing in the first place. Oh, I thought I had to turn it twice. Oh, what now? Yeah, that doesn't seem very efficient, like that, but okay. Oh, amazing! You did it! Now the tonic will flow into everyone's cups without getting stuck, right? Oh, no, somebody had to be there. is starting to get pretty curious there. about this magic tonic. Um, could she have a teeny tiny sip? Just a little taste, please? Come oh, on, don't be mean, let her try it. It's not greed, it's curiosity. Well, if it's really just one sip, I guess that would be fine. Just be careful. This is one of the last cups left in the entire forest. We're supposed to save it for our research. Just a sip, promise. Okay, here it goes. What was that? Oh, it's uh, stuck into the Pymon's tongue! Uh, wait, is this just regular ink? Makes sense. Ink and paper, huh? Wait, does that mean... what the legend says is true? The goddess of fate used ink to compose her stories on paper, and the goddess of creation used her power to bring those tales to life. No wonder the tavern is so important to the forest! Maybe the fading disorder occurs when the ink within the body dries up. That would explain why the beings here are forgetting their own stories. Oh. Nice I'm not really sure I can really wrap my head around this conversation, but there's no need to get all worked up on our behalf, my lady. With the pipe installed, I'm sure the tavern will be up and running in no time. Oh, what do you mean, can't wrap your head around it? The fairy is recounting the story of how the goddesses gave us life. In fact, I've seen the goddess of creation with my own eyes. Really? Don't be ridiculous. There's no way you're old enough to have met her. We're the same age, and I think I would know considering we went to tell our wishes to the goddess of fate together. So stop talking a load of paper mache. <laughs> oh, fine. It was my grandfather, all right? He was the one that saw her. He said that one day after he finished work, he saw the goddess of creation grant us life with his own eyes. In her hands, she held the very paper used to form our bodies. She whispered something into the pages, and then suddenly a paper frog was born, ready to leap into the world. Oh, it was spectacular. Ugh, cut the theatrics, will you? You weren't even there. Wait, so... That's it? Paimon thought creation 
magic would have a little bit more... pizzazz. Oh, so in your world, the creation of life is a much showier affair? Huh, I'm learning something new every day. Um, w well, that's not exactly what Paimon was trying to say. Magic doesn't have to be spectacular. That's enough out of you. All your boasting is confusing our kind fairy. Oh, no, it's all right. I actually think I understand the magic of this world a bit better now. Thank you. The honor was all ours, milady. We've got one final stop. Let's go. First to find gets to stake their claim. Seems fair. First to find gets to stake their claim. Seems fair. Oh, let's check here. Oh, let's get that first. <laughs> This rate, it doesn't even matter if the tavern reopens. <laughs> the band's not even going to get any gigs. <sighs> I'm sorry. Uh, hello there. I hope we aren't interrupting your rehearsal. Wait, these are the two frogs we saw on the road a little while ago. Oh, the forest fairy is here. For the love of lotus leaves and dewdrop stream, you've really got to put in some effort now. But I... Oh, don't pressure yourselves on my account. Are you rehearsing for a show? Sure are. <laughs> you see, our group regularly performs for guests at the tavern. We've been out of work for quite some time, with the closure and all. But after hearing of the fairy's arrival yesterday, we figured we needed to get in performance shape right away. <laughs> I understand how you feel. Back at the Grand Bazaar, Zubair Theater's always busy with rehearsals, too. The Grand Bazaar? Do people there sing on lotus leaves as well? Yeah, they do. And it's a really big one. You're the conductor of your group, aren't you? You remind me of Mr. Zubair. Ah, then he must be an ambitious director. One who would do anything to avoid disappointing a single member of the audience. It's just... Hmm. Is there anything we can do to help you, Mr. Stream? Oh, no, no. My problems are mine and mine alone. It's just... After the tavern closed, I somehow forgot how to sing. I'm always a few beats behind everyone else, and... I keep singing out of key. You were our trump card, our best singer by a mile. I know, I know, but... <sighs> so he is a victim of the fading disorder too? Don't be sad, Mr. Stream. Whenever I've forgotten important dance steps in the past, my friends at the Grand Bazaar always stick by my side to encourage me. They smile and patiently tell me everything's going to be okay. Then, they play the melody for me over and over, until the steps finally come back to me. Now, it's our turn to help you. We just need to help you remember how to sing, right? The Traveler's got a great sense of rhythm. We can help keep you in time. Well, what do you say, Stream? I think it's a great idea. Just focus on the lyrics, and the fairy's friends will help you stay on beat. Are... are you sure? This is really asking a lot. Don't worry about it, Mr. Stream. It'll all be worth it when the tavern reopens and we finally have the chance to hear your marvelous singing voice. All right, then. Thank you so much, everyone. I I'll give it my best shot. Okay. Oh. The 
paper for a core will perform sequentially according to the rhythm. There is the rightmost frog to jump at the right moment. There may be song and dance accompanying the performance. Remember to follow the accompanying rhythm too. Let's go, Don Gero. What do I do? I jump? How do I tell it? Am I supposed to jump? Ah. Excellent! Perfectly in time! Written with heaven. I feel like I'm getting the hang of it again. Goddess is above. This better stick when it comes to the performance. Just do it exactly like how we rehearsed. Thank you, everyone. Thanks to you, my voice is once again as clear as a flowing stream. Glad to hear that you're feeling better, Mr. Stream. It's also about time for us to go to our next destination. Mm hmm. We'll be looking forward to your performance at the tavern. First to find gets to stake their claim. Uh, Seems fair. Back there. of this world. We don't even know why the tavern closed in the first place. <sighs> oh, what about the method that one hamster mentioned? You should try it, Nilu. You mean the creation magic his grandfather saw outside the hut of blessings? Hmm, I wonder. How exactly did the goddess of creation give them life? Maybe you don't need to understand it. Just give it a try. Everyone here calls you the Forest Fairy. Maybe you have the magic powers already and you just don't know it. In other words, this forest is a stage. And all I need to do is... Step out into the spotlight? <laughs> Sounds just like a fairy tale. Well, we are surrounded by talking origami animals and magic potions after oh, all. I didn't go there. Almost seems like anything's possible in this place. You're right, Paimon. We won't know anything unless we try. In that case, let's see. Yellow takes out a page from book and folds. This is how you do it, right? I think I got the folds right. Wow, your origami skills are great! I once saw one of our prop people making something similar. It looked really cool, so I took some time during my break to learn the basics. It's not a bad way to stave off sleepiness, either. Well, how do you feel? Sense any, uh... Magical powers flowing through you? Mm. No. No? Mm. What are we missing? Aren't you supposed to say some magic words? Magic words? But how am I supposed to know what the goddess said to bring them to life? Doesn't matter what she said, focus on what you want to say. Oh, good point! You're the forest fairy, Nilu! What do you want to say to the new resident of your domain? Mm 
and picks the hamster and kisses it gently on the forehead. I bestow upon you the blessings of the forest and offer you a home in this land. Your name shall be Harisara. May you bloom in this world as beautifully as the flower I love. <sighs> My name is Parisara. It worked! It actually worked! Well, peel my shell and call me a nut. <laughs> I never imagined I'd witness such a miracle at my age. <laughs> it's just like what the story said about the goddess of creation. Shell? Miracle? Nice to meet you, Padisara. I'm Nilu, the fairy of this forest. From this day forward, this place is now your home. Hello, Fairy Nilu. I hope you'll grow up happily in this forest. Grow up. Hey, big girl. <laughs> oh, you can leave the little one with old Armand for now. Oh, uh, this sure brings back memories. <laughs> it's been such a long time since we last held a welcome ceremony. Here, Padisara. Mm. Uh, come to Grandpa Armand. Well, now that Milu has mastered the goddess's magic, we should be able to reopen the tavern, right? Hmm. Grandpa Almond, could you send a few people to check the underground space beneath the tavern? Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, may yeah, I please. ask why? The moment I used magic, I sensed something strange down there. I have a feeling it's connected to why the tavern had to close down. Uh, of course, we'll look yeah, into it right away. Three closed, if that's Make sure book. you listen to Grandpa Omen, Potty Sara. Don't go running off on your own. Potty Sara. Listen. <laughs> running! Hey, come back here, you! Wait! Yep, that's Nilo's creation, all right! She's got so much energy. Anyway, how did you manage it, Nilu? Well... All I did was say my wishes for her out loud. Maybe the magic is in the words themselves, just like the book said. This place is seeming more like a fairy tale by the second. I mean, or some are called the Forest of Blessings, so it kind of makes sense. Well, anyway, Paimon thinks this magic suits you perfectly, Milu. What about the space in the tavern? Oh. Why are you so concerned? When I brought Harisara to life just now, I was able to sense the magic flowing through the forest, and the flowers and trees, and inside the creatures that live here. But for some reason, there's a hollowed out space beneath the tavern where I couldn't sense anything at all. We're back, my lady. That was fast. You were right. There was something under the tavern that I've never seen before. It looked transparent and gave off a clinking sound when I knocked on it. Transparent and clinking? Oh, I've got it! Uh, already? <laughs> You've got to use fairy tale logic, Paimon. Is it an ink bottle? That's right! An empty ink bottle, to be exact. Still remember the taste of the magic tonic you took a sip of, Paimon? Yeah, it was ink. <gasps> oh, Paimon gets it now! Traveler, Paimon, will you come gather some ingredients with me? I learned what we need to make the magic tonic back in the Hut of Blessings. Sure thing! What do we need to get? Hmm. A setting sun that never sets. A dragon that cannot fly. And a moon that only shines at night. I. Uh, where are we supposed to find crazy things like that? She means a Satyas, a Snapdragons, a Lachpalotsis. What? How did you hmm. get that so fast? Fair to logic, Pimel. Logic, okay, huh? <laughs> Lucky guess, more like. Well. I'm hurt now. Uh, it's been so long I used her. I don't.
Oh, no. Collect materials. <laughs> I'll set you some. Seven sets. Try one that can fly. And not that. Out there. Oh, she the doesn't moon. have anything to do. Transfixed. Now she does. Ready. Kill. No. Positions. A moon that only shines at night. That should be everything, right? What should we do now? Hmm. Let's go back to the hut of blessings. Give me just a second. I'm gonna go fetch an ink bottle from the other room. First you do this, then this, hmm. and then... It's done! Uh... Okay, it's better than to be wow. back, but... Magic sure makes everything super convenient! No? Oh, I thought we would take that. Ah, okay, we're just testing first. Yes, this is it. This is exactly the magic tonic we need. Grandpa Almond, could you take the concoction to the room underneath the tavern and place it next to the transparent bottle you found? I'll handle the rest. Of course. As you command, so it shall be done. <sighs> I still get nervous at times like this. It's just like when you step on stage, and you can tell that every single person's gaze is fixed right on you. Relax, Nilo. We're right here with you. <laughs> Thanks, you two. I can't tell you how great it is to have you by my side. Almost makes me feel like I've been blessed by the goddess of fate, too. Let's go. We shouldn't keep everyone waiting. Uh, let me just... Resurrected that people here first. Uh, they don't go back. Back there. Hmm. So, what flavor of magic tonic should I whip up first? See, I was right! That's exactly what the goddess of creation did all those years ago! Ugh, brag away. But don't think you're getting out of carrying all those pipes with me later. Where are the frogs? Forest. Please, he 
heed my words and accept my blessings. May your spring of wondrous magic never run dry. And may all who call you their home lead happy, fulfilling lives. I thought this would look be more like paper. Fairy Nilu is amazing. Wow, it's so pretty. What a beautiful cavern. It matches the scenery of the forest perfectly. I was so surprised when it suddenly opened up like that. Just like a pop-up book. Well? <sighs> I, I remember now. I remember everything. It was me. I was the one who went to the top of Constellation Metropole and witnessed the goddess's prophecy. The hero who shall save this world will descend upon the Cliff of Prophecy. The hero, supported by their companions, shall restore peace to this world. So the prophecy really did have all the answers, you just forgot the first half! That's why I was waiting near the Cliff of Prophecy. <laughs> wonderful, simply wonderful. There's still some hope left for old Armand after all. Is the Cliff of Prophecy that place with the huge mural? Cause that is where we woke up, but we don't remember anything about how we got there. Also, we didn't get a change of clothes like Nilu. Are we definitely the heroes? If not you, then who else? Uh, you, you've already helped the fairy revitalize our forest. To us, that makes you heroes. Prophesized or not. All right. Either way, we're going to keep adventuring, even if it's just to figure out how we can get back to our world. We, we were just there. Oh, we can also help resolve any crisis along the way. We can also help resolve your dragon problem along the way. That sounds more interesting. Yep, we've beaten up plenty of dragons already, so what's one more? Mm-hmm. As expected, the words of the Goddess of Prophecy always come true. I'll come with you. It can't hurt to have a magical fairy tag along, right? I never ask. Actually, I really thought you would never ask. <laughs> it would be an honor, my lady. Heroes and fairies, dragons and new adventures. <laughs> this is sounding more and more like a fairy tale by the second. Hmm, I would say your next stop should be Constellation Metropole. It's Simi Lanka's most prosperous city, uh, just across the sea. Mm. Once you've arrived at the Astral Garden at the highest point in the city, uh, maybe you can try seeking divine counsel from the Goddess of Prophecy herself. Are you leaving, Fairy Nilu? I'm afraid so. There are still other people who need my help. I won't go far, though, and I'll come back to visit the minute I have time to spare. So be a good girl, Patisara, and help out Grandpa Alma whenever you can, all right? Mm-hmm. Got it! Patisara will wait here for you. <laughs> oh, that's a good girl, Patisara. Ah, I almost forgot. If... Constellation Metropole is where you're heading, you'll need to take the Maritime Express. 
I'll head to the station first thing tomorrow morning and wake up that lazy station master for you. Uh, why don't you take a break for the rest of the day? You should savor the beautiful scenery of the forest before you go. Sounds great! Paimon definitely feels tired after being on the go for so long. There's a spot in the tavern with Paimon's name on it. Oh, sounds like someone's ready to order. Oh, well, if you're offering, Paimon will take a glass of Buell fruit tonic. Um, but hold the tonic. <laughs> Does she know what sold here, right? <laughs> ah. Come on. See things working. Take the other ones. Should citrus be here? Ah, uh, you guys need two for each. Okay, while well, doing that, just fix the kink in my neck, and now my arms feel oh, like they're gonna fall pet. off. Seeing the tavern full and lively again makes it all worth it. Okay, now. Okay, now let's see what happens when they serve everybody. I should be able to, I don't know, just buy the fruits here. Ah, uh, you. Um, Firecracker? I think you've had enough. <laughs> Look, I'm just really happy for you, okay? <laughs> happy for all of us. The entire forest. Listen to you, you're gonna ruin your voice if you keep going. <laughs> Well, he doesn't really sing, he just conducts the others, so does he need to keep his voice? Our kind fairy dances just as beautifully as the goddess of creation. Ah, <sighs> here we go again. Let me guess, she was dancing when your grandfather saw her create life, was she? <laughs> Very funny. A goddess is all powerful. Of course she can dance. Okay, well now, you guys are done. Huh, <laughs> Okay, I guess that's over now. No, oh wait, two, eight. Morning! Guess everything that happened yesterday wasn't just a dream then. Uh, 
there isn't really a path there. Oh, I thought it was the blow to jump. Said you uh, time to get to work, you lazy bones. Oh, 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 I can't, uh, can't remember how to call the train. Just let me sleep a little longer, and I'm sure I'll remember. Don't try to pull one over on me, young man. Your fading disorder has been cured. I saw you chugging cup after cup of magic tonic in the tavern last night. Uh. You must be mistaken, Grandpa Alman. That guy definitely wasn't me. Oh, you remember my name now, do you? Then it seems like you're all better. You had no idea who I was when you were fading. Now, enough of your nonsense. Get up. The fairy and her friends are going to be here any second. All right. I'm up. I'm up. The Maritime Express should be here soon. That's more like it. Ah, lie there any longer and you'll start gathering dust. Uh, is everything okay? The hero, his pixie companion, and the forest fairy. Oh, I, I didn't know you were already here. <laughs> Merciful macadamias. I I'm sorry you had to see that. Oh, it's all right. Paimon knows the feeling. Who doesn't want to sleep in first thing in the morning? Does the Maritime Express run out of Constellation Metropole? Uh, yes. E each train needs a conductor to operate, and the conductors are always from the capital. The more difficult maneuvers are a little too complicated when you're made of paper. Oh! So you mean the people of Constellation Metropole aren't origami animals like you? Well, the, the city welcomes visitors from all over the world, so you're bound to run into some forest dwellers there. But yes, generally speaking, the residents of Constellation Metropole look quite different from us. Ah, you'll see for yourself soon enough. Here comes the train. Pleasure to meet you, everyone. My name is Will, and I'll be the conductor for your journey today. I'm assuming you're the one who called the train. Whoa, it's a little toy man! Yes, we, we called the train. The hero and the forest fairy need a ride to Constellation Metropole. The, the hero and the forest fairy? The ones from the prophecy? Oh, why didn't you say so earlier? We could have prepared a far more luxurious train. I'll just go back and get a better one. That's okay, Mr. Wheel. We're trying to get to the city as fast as possible. We just need you to get us across the sea. In your capable hands, I'm sure we'll get there in no time. Of course, my lady. It would be an honor. Well then, all aboard, sit anywhere you like. We'll get a stunning view of Simulanka no matter where you're seated. <sighs> oh, breakfast. <sighs> Did one of you just say something? Not me. 
wasn't me either. Uh, breakfast. Um, oh, come back. Hmm. Sounds like the voice is coming from inside the train. <sighs> oh, fish. Chicken drumsticks. Oh, gotcha. Oh. What the? What's Kirara doing here? Hmm. It's her old day, apparently. Nom, nom, nom. Is she a friend of yours? Oh, let Paimon introduce you. This is Kirara. She's... Oh, wait. Actually, maybe we should wake her up first. <laughs> so noisy. <laughs> I I is it morning already? Kumyoni? Oh, morning. Huh? Huh? Traveler! Paimon! I I it's you? Which means... Oh, thank goodness. It was all a dream after all. <laughs> oh, gotta hand it to my imagination. It all felt super real. There were these toy people, but they were alive and they could talk. <clears throat> Madam, sleeping overnight in the train car is prohibited. Kirara, apparently we're in a world called Simulanka. We got here yesterday, too. Simulanka? So, that's what it's called. I spent all day yesterday wandering around this one city. Uh, the toy people called it Constellation Metropole. I was trying to find a way to get back home. <sighs> I was seriously starting to think I'd gotten on the bad side of some great yokai and gotten swallowed whole. Huh. <sighs> I take it you're Inazuman then, Miss Kirara? Oh, she they sure can't is. Tell. That's but, uh, Kirara here is kind of special. Let Paimon introduce you for real this time. Kirara is a Nekomata from Inazuma. She works as a courier for Komania Express. Huh, nice to meet you. I'm Nilu, a member of Zubair Theater. You can usually find us performing in Sumeru City's Grand Bazaar. Right now, though, I suppose I should introduce myself as the Fairy of the Forest of Blessings. Oh, you're Nilu! I've heard a lot about you from my deliveries in Sumeru. I even saw one of your performances back in the day. You're an amazing dancer. But, uh, did you say you were a... forest fairy? Oh, yeah, that's her new identity here in Simulanka. Oh, speaking of new identities, looks like you got a new outfit yourself, Kirara! Yeah, I know! confused the heck out of me yesterday. I just woke up in a set of brand new clothes I'd never seen before. That must mean you have a big part to play here too! It's a bit weird that they all got here yesterday. As a cat burglar. Some Nekomata in boots. She's not wearing boots. I think Miss Lynette would be better suited to that role, being a magician and all. Did you by any chance hear a voice speaking to you before you got here, Miss Kirara? A voice... Oh, yeah, I did hear something! But I was so freaked out my tails got all tangled, so I, uh, didn't catch much of what was said. <laughs> sorry for the interruption, but this, uh, Nekomata friend of yours... She doesn't eat hamsters, does she? <laughs> or frogs? Why is the oh, frog no need to worry, little guys. I would never do something like that. Well, unless I've been out in the wild too long without anything to eat. Oh, well, speaking of eating, I am getting a little hungry. Hmm. <laughs> <sighs> Come on. It's just three dots. <coughs> Very well long. manners, everyone. Uh, this young lady is a trusted friend of our esteemed hero. 
Now, I know a fear of felines is etched into us with ink, but I'm certain Miss Necromata in boots here means us no harm. She does very boots. It sure looks like you're keeping your distance, though, Grandpa Holmond. <laughs> you will have nothing to fear, I promise. I met some origami animals in Constellation Metropole yesterday, and I even made sure to retract my claws so I didn't hurt them by accident. Plus, you all look just about as tasty as the cardboard boxes I deliver. <laughs> uh, not that I tried to eat you even if you did look tasty. Uh, promise. Please excuse us, Mom. Uh, it's just an unconscious reaction. <clears throat> Dear passengers, it's almost time for us to depart. Oh, yeah, that. Whoops. This turned into a pretty long conversation, didn't it? Mm -hmm. All right, let's get on the train. You coming with us, Kiwara? Mm-hmm. I'll ride with you to the next stop. There's a place near the Metropole that caught my eye yesterday, so I want to go explore it today. Then all that remains for me to say is, on behalf of the Forest of Blessings, thank you once again for all you've done for us. May the Goddess of Fate be with you and bless your journey, Madam Fairy, Miss Necomata in Boots, and our brave heroes. Please do visit us in the Forest of Blessings again, once peace has returned to this land. We will. We'll definitely meet again. Take care, Grandpa Almond. He wants to fuck this very sky. Uh, they turned in part up. Why do we need to connect both? Okay, so you guys are saying fire. That felt unnecessary. Bye. Have a safe trip. Wow, a train ride over the sea? What an incredible view! Please keep your head and arms inside the train at all times. We don't want anyone falling into the sea. I think this will be more awkward. There's a train coming the other way too! Hey! And now that the fading disorder is cured, I'm sure the forest will be a lively place again in no time. I gotta go explore that forest at some point. It looked so pretty from the train. I just hope they, uh, won't be too scared of me. We'll be arriving at our destination shortly. Please prepare to disembark. Huh. Here we are! Constellation Metropole is right over there. It's a short walk from here to the Gear Sky Ladder, which will take you right to Metropole Square. And thank you again for choosing Maritime Express. Great! And thanks to you for a smooth and pleasant journey, Mr. Wheel. The train cars were comfortable and spacious, and I had a great night's sleep. I'll definitely be back. <laughs> um, as you wish, ma'am. Where should we go next? Is that place you wanted to check out nearby? Mm-hmm. I took a walk around yesterday, and it felt like there was something weird about it. So, I think I'll indulge my curiosity and go investigate. Want us to come with you? It's okay. You guys go ahead and visit the Metropole for now. Hopefully, that's where you'll be able to find out some more about this world. I pretty much explored the whole place from the rooftops yesterday, but for some reason, this is the place that caught my attention. 
So, we should <laughs> You check. know what I mean, right? Like, when you get a stone stuck in your claw or something, it keeps nagging at you to dig it out, but you can't focus on anything else until you do. Don't worry. If you run into any trouble, I'll be there faster than you can say Gold Level Courier of the Comania Express. Okay, fair enough. We'll head to the Metropole then. Guess this is where we say bye for now. Stay safe, girl. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about me. Let's not forget, I'm a yokai. Oh. Wow. What's up? Hey, are you guys already finished with everything in the Metropole? Let's say so. No need to prioritize me. Uh, there's just this place I really want to go check out. Feel free to get back to me once you've got everything sorted out. Oh, uh, we're all good. Great! Let's I go! Think. I've delivered packages all over, but I've never seen a mysterious fairy tale world like this before. Looks like nobody has gotten around to repairing this house yet. Ugh, even I wouldn't dare to sleep in there. It might suddenly collapse in on you. Nothing to see here either. Maybe we can find someone to ask? Aha! Over there! I bet we'll find some people there. Let's go take a look. Why this place called her attention? She should tell us. It looks just like a uh -huh. cute village. I was sure there'd be people here. There once was a goddess who ruled over fate. Before she died, she left three riddles for the kingdom she had created. Long story short, on this day, a sentient feline, an outlander, and a uh, diminutive pixie arrived on the scene. They saw a narrow path off to the side. Okay, but which side? Yeah, if you gave ambiguous instructions like that to a Comania Express courier, they'd give you the parcel right back and tell you to write the delivery address more clearly. Despite how obvious the answer was, the perplexed pixie and the flummoxed feline struggled to work it out. Hmm. Although, perhaps a small part of the blame could be attributed to my dull narration. Alright, let's uh, try this again. <clears throat> the path on the left-hand side seemed to give off an enticing fragrance, as if to say, uh, this is the way to wealth and glory. Ooh, that sounds like the start of a good story. Then what? Then what? We should follow the path. At the end of the path, the motley crew would soon spot a secret stone room. A prophecy had once foretold of a Marquis who shall one day venture inside, and thus it is named the Future Marquis Abode to Be. You like it? The Future Marquis Abode to Be? Got a nice ring to it, doesn't it? That was a little bit boastful. But before you continue, I must warn you of the danger that lies ahead. For example, under no circumstances should you sit on the chair in the center. Otherwise, the consequences could be... a, a bit embarrassing. Uh... What's supposed to be going here? So many summers, winters, springs, and falls, and now, at last, a hero hither strides. Israel knows not what lies beyond its walls. Its secrets mystify the world outside. Wait, new voices. Who are they? Read. In the name of the elders of our three tribes, As we... gold in sunlight fills the firmament, the tabletop engrosses... Captivated by the epic poetry and enthralled by the outstanding oh. storytelling, I the can't... Outlanders knew what their next objective was. Namely, to remove the clockwork key from the raised platform up ahead. 
Kebe, I just realized you said we all had to speak like bards, but every time you open up your mouth, I don't hear any rhymes. Yeah, I noticed that too. It's one standard for us and another for you. That's not with wood and earthenware strewn all around. The demon feline's fury can't be quelled, reducing them to rubble on the ground. Uh, perhaps the Outlanders are worried that something drastic will happen the moment they remove it. Maybe that's why they're investigating the area thoroughly first. Can't fault them for that. Yeah, it's not I'm easy to investigate with people talking. I'm wondering if we can take advantage talking. of this to discuss whether we really need to keep this up. Oh, if you guys don't want to put on a voice and speak in verse, be my guest. Just don't blame me for your own poetic incompetence. I want to read that again. I stopped reading because you guys started talking. I didn't collect that, did I? Something new? No. Okay, I missed that. Um, one hour fifty-one. Okay, I'll try to remember to check that afterwards. Wasn't I supposed to like not sit in here? Stop the poem. We have a situation. Someone's up with this person. Traveler, uh, are you all right? Turns out it's Lou. <laughs> there is an up. The glue is holding you firmly in place. Stand up. You manage to partly unstick yourself. The issue isn't that you can't break free. It's more that you want to tear your clothes in the process. They mean a lot to you. They're the only set I have. Yeah, the main character should have got another set of clothes by now. Can I give you a hand or a tail, even? Can you walk in your tail too? Keep trying to stand up. You find it for yourself instead of clothes stacked. Ah, oh, it's not here anymore. What was the point of that? Strong as stone, firm as steel, the outlander pulls, but it does not yield. This has happened many times before, but this time is different. A thought enters the outlander's mind. Attack! Attack! First, weaken the structure. Then seize the treasure! Yes. The attack now over! Only one final step remains! Now it is the time to seize the key! Yes! Finally! Come on, move your butts! And your lights, assuming they're still in working order! It's showtime! No hard oh. feelings about your lack of poetic contributions? Oh, let it go! Something you wish to report? Go on. You have my undivided attention. Ah! What's the point? Welcome, esteemed and noble outlander. Allow us to introduce ourselves. We represent the three great clans of this realm, having been selected as its authorized historical supervisors. Our purpose being to await the arrival of one such as yourselves who shall remove the clockwork key. My name is... You're Cape, he's Albizzi, and that's Bobarano, right? You've done so much talking that we can already tell you apart by your voices. Aren't we missing someone, though? The guy who led us here to begin with? Who? <clears throat> and thus was born the long-awaited fellowship, destined to uncover the truth of the past. Allow me to quote, if I may, in the history of Constellation Metropole, a new page has begun. Him. Well, there's no fourth person, so which of you is the ventriloquist? 
Come on, out with it. We've never heard that voice before, but he sounds like he'd be good at reading bedtime stories to children. Whoever it is, I don't know and I don't care. Forget about him. We have far more important things to focus on, like where our journey goes from here. That key you hold is the pivot point about which the past and present of the Metropole revolve. However, between our three clans, there is some dispute over the historical record. Each clan has its own version of history, detailing the clan's origins and the tale of the dragon of old. Mm. And unfortunately, we don't know which one is the truth. Dragon? You mean the one that's been acting oh, up yeah, recently? So the drone be made oh, of, of <laughs> no, 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 not um, that one, you not. adorable little pixie. When I say dragon of old, <laughs> he means a dragon that would be really, really old if it was still with us today, but it was defeated in ancient times. The new one has nothing to do with our clan history. Uh, was that supposed to be a joke? <clears throat> uh, anyway, so you've been waiting for someone to remove the key so you can finally explore the truth of the past? Not just explore it, but argue incessantly about it. Honestly, I don't care that much. Cape's the one who's always bothering us about it. What we need to figure out is who resolved the dragon crisis. We have to know that before we can decide which is the Supreme Clan. The moment you removed the key from where it was lodged, you became the Honorary Marquis. We humbly beseech you, Noble Outlander. Palmeiras, and they'll call me Traveler. Noble Traveler Marquis, we ask you to help us. You and your... Uh, your talking puss in boots and the pale floating pixie. Puss in oh, boots? boots? Are you serious? It's better than demon feline, but still. Embrace it, my friend. Embrace it. Most cats don't wear boots or speak, do they? She's not wearing I'm not boots. even a cat. I'm a Nekomata. Now that you know the word, I expect you to use it. Please allow me to lead you all to a sacred memorial site. It will be much easier to explain what needs to be done once we are there. Capitalist departure to the so-called sacred memorial site. This place is sacred to my clan. It's where our brave forefathers once took up arms against the dragon of old. After a bitter battle that dragged mm. on for many days and nights, finally, our forefathers fought the dragon into submission, and it fled. They took turns, though. <laughs> Some forefathers worked the day shift, while others worked the night shift. So they worked shifts while the poor dragon had to work around the clock? So they say. It's just a legend, though. Wait a second? Did I just hear you admit that your clan's history is just a legend? A history, legend, who cares? My clan was definitely courageous, that's the point. That's the truth. And isn't the truth what we've all been arguing about non-stop for all these years? Cape's words gave the Traveler food for thought. Could it be that the truth in a fictional world is equivalent to fiction in the real world? But that would have to wait. Apparently, Cape was not alone in his pilgrimage to this sacred site. Unwanted company had arrived. The Traveler and the Talking Cat, <clears throat> Nekomata, decided to teach them some manners. Were those huge churros reading books as well? of heroism and valor. It was as if the spirits of my ancestors were fighting through me. There's a thought. Could be wrong. But maybe the Traveler Marquis is a lot more powerful than your ancestors. Well, technically, by saying that, aren't you implicitly acknowledging that my clan's history is, in fact, true? Your martial prowess and show of courage are a more vivid reenactment of my ancestors' feats suit the modern aesthetic. Now, let's get down to business. As we all know, time is but an illusion. Time may flow line by line, page by page, or frame by frame, but usually, 
It flows in the form of springs and gears. And that clockwork key you have in your hand can turn back time and make the past reappear. Mm. Well, actually, my view is that the illusion of time is more of a problem of consciousness. Gears power the body, while the body is the vessel of the conscious mind. But the mind cannot understand the dimension of time, so we experience instead an endless continuum of moments as the pinion of now turns along the rack of ages. I... I'm getting flashbacks to when I was delivering packages to the Sumeru Academia. A teacher once asked Albizzi, what his greatest fear was, and he replied, dragons. Boberano was asked the same question. He replied, time, and repeated the argument we just heard. The teacher then turned to Cape and posed the same question. He replied, Boberano. <laughs> the the manuscript best that tells the truth things. of the historical record, the blueprint to all of creation, the work of the great mage themselves, it can be found at the beginning of the gear rack, and on the very first page of the book. Uh, Paimon didn't follow all that, but basically, you're just saying that we need to put the key in and turn it all the way back? Exactly. It is said that in the beginning, the goddess of creation took the goddess of fate's manuscript as a blueprint, placed it under the goddess of prophecy's starry realm, and generated the world from a few magic arrays. So in a few moments, when the great clockwork key turns the local time here back to the very beginning, we will restore the magic arrays back to their original configurations. Hold on, isn't stealing part of the blueprint of creation a little dangerous? Also, how are we supposed to know the original configurations of the magic arrays? Uh, uh, well, the general shapes of the configurations have been passed down over the ages. They now form the family crests of each of our clans. So you'll just need to reference my family crest and join the dots accordingly. Mm hmm? Uh. Okay. To address your other concern, when the house has already been built, do you really think that taking away the construction crew and blueprint will cause it to collapse? The Traveler Marquis prepares to insert the Great Clockwork Key into the nearby keyhole. Connect the lines with both family crests. Society, what? What are you saying? What were you saying? There's not enough time to read everybody. I think that better be the real deal. Wait, which side is up? Ah. This was originally a pillar. There were residents of Sri Lanka used to pray for oracles, but it has other issues uses today. You, as you view the ringed oracle pillar, uh, the interaction button will merge, press the mesh thread will fly towards the other pillar and is connected. When unable to connect, you can attack the connected pillar to reset all connection states. Okay. I guess we should start here? Behold, the sacred writings that record the truth of... No, wait. That have shaped the truth of history. Gather round and let us bear witness. Brave Francois mounted the haystack. Pick it up a fork and place it, it times down on top of the mountain of grass. Behind him was a large bright moon. He shouted out the names of everyone in the village. The village chief was the first to be named. And so frightened was he that he wished to climb up the haystack. 
they stop up Francois's mouth. Are you crazy? You're yelling so loudly the dragon might show up? You do for nothing? Have you not seen how the windmill were? How the windmill everyone built has been destroyed by the dragon? And here you are worrying if it will return. Rasa really would have loved to keep him off the haystack, but held back given that the chief too was worried for the villagers' safety. Rasa saw that not all the villagers had arrived, and so he cleared his throat. Dear neighbors and king, think you, think you still that we must endure this? No, of course not. But we cannot do anything about the dragon, said the grocer. Uh, who says so? Uh, did I not leap into its neck from the windmill's blades? I stepped onto it twice and did it not fall down and flee? Perhaps everyone worked so hard but to build the mill that was destroyed, everyone's emotions became inflamed. Why is redacted? Lifting their fists, they decided to take on the dragon. But Francois lifted his own hands and calmed the crowd. Let us go home for today, everyone. Everyone's present uh, lack of self preservation is not bravery, but rather wrath. If we yet desire to face danger after calming ourselves, only then may we truthfully call our sentiment valor. So everyone went home. The next day, there were still many youngsters who wished to follow Francois to take on the wicked dragon. Who have known that the valiant possess the, the protection of the goddess of Radiant Charter? Encountering true valor, the dragon could neither spot fire nor slash with claws. It was forced to allow the other party to call pauses and switch personal. And so, after several days and nights of fierce fighting, the weak dragon could no longer bear it, and he chose to surrender. A. I'm not sure. I follow. Feast your eyes, rejoice and cheer, for this is the unquestionable truth. Look at the signature. Nobody is capable of forging that. I don't believe it. So. All along, our histories have been false? Don't lose heart, Albizzi. It does not follow from his is true that ours are false. That might be the most bogus logic I've ever heard. But keep up the mental gymnastics, Boberano. I've been waiting for that look of jealousy on your face my whole life, and I'm going to savor it. And yet, it seemed that this conundrum could indeed have more than one solution. Everyone agreed that there may be more than one truth. The party decided to visit the sacred sites of the other clans and see what their documents had to say. Isn't a narrator supposed to remain detached and objective? It feels like you're forcing a narrative agenda on us here. Well, whatever. I'm in a good mood. Let's do it. <laughs> the instructions say to repeat the process three times, and besides, I'm looking forward to watching you both be sorely disappointed. Let's do my clan next. I'll lead the way. We'll need the key again, right? Let me see if I can pull it out. Mm. Yoink! <laughs> uh, we're not taking... Uh, we didn't took Neil with us here. Didn't we... Hey, it's not so huge. It's manageable. Huh, over birds. Huh. Well, you're along the way. No, uh, what was the button?
uh, there. Greater pleasure is there than the unexpected. Help me! Oh. Somebody, please! Mm. Help me! Help! Oh, goddess of prophecy above, would you kind souls please help us? What happened here? Why are you all suspended in midair? I mean, being stuck in midair still beats falling to the ground and being smashed into a pile of blocks, but. I told him to be careful, but no. Never mind. Now's not the time for that. My good friends, could I trouble you to turn the clockwork key over there? I'll explain everything in a bit. Hmm. In the vicinity of Constellation Metropole, you can sometimes see a small toy. Some small toy figures fixed around the constellation clockwork device. This is a gift from the goddess of prophecy to the metropole, and it can help toy figures who have encountered danger return to the right track. Attack the clockwork device to gradually rewind the surrounding scene. After rewinding, keep everything still for two seconds, and the toy figures' faded tracks will begin to move once more. Uh, if find clues in the scene, they can interfere. Fear in movement using this change uh, of use this to change the fate of the figures. Uh, okay, let's see what happens. Okay, so you look quite right, a little back, further back, a little further back again. Okay, so it was totally your fault. All right, we're done backing up. Uh, Staring into my eyes is ill-advised. Whatever they're in I danger. I promise you'll like what you see. What if I don't let it, it return? <laughs> uh, it's <sighs> oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. I take it this is your first time witnessing the power of the Goddess of Prophecy, then? If so, I can see why you might think that. Basically, this is a gift bestowed upon Constellation Metropole by the Goddess of Prophecy, who rules over the natural course of all things. It helps those who have deviated from their proper path to get back on track. Proper path? Do you mean everything that happens in the Metropole has been planned out since the very beginning? Why are you saying that as if it's a bad thing? You're not explaining it clearly. Here, allow me. Of course, all the residents of the Metropole have the freedom to live their own lives. For instance, whether I use olive oil or sesame oil in my morning skincare routine is entirely my choice. But whenever something disastrous is about to happen, like when I almost got turned into a pile of rubble just now, the goddess's magic will activate in the world around us. So, in other words, it's kind of protection magic to keep people alive? You could say that. There are other situations in which it activates too, but that's basically correct. Well, in any case, we're glad no one's hurt. Are you heading to the Constellation Metropole? Yep. Do you know where we can find the Gear Sky Ladder? Oh, it's just that platform up ahead. The one with the key sticking out. Uh, that thing? Um, are you sure? You should have questioned yep, the rest that's of the one. Time. Pretty much everything in the Metropole runs on tracks and gears. The Goddess of Prophecy watches over it all. Which is to say, all the tracks are fixed. If a machine is set up to move forwards, it'll never move in reverse. This reminds Paimon a lot of Fontaine's clockwork toys. You mean, 
Like those music boxes with dancing figures? I think I've seen one or two from the merchants in Sumeru. Yeah, exactly like that. Anyway, sounds like it's not gonna suddenly fall out of the sky, so Paimon's okay now. Should we get going? So if one of them dies, it's because the goddess really wanted them to die. What greater pleasure is there than the unexpected? Okay, quests. <laughs> Ah, uh, the next one is the wind. Mm, the gear scalator is an important means of transportation in Constellation Metropole. Attack a hyper device activate the ladder and make it move. When the gear is full charge, you stop moving and the scalator will also stop moving. When the gear is not attacked for some time, the scalator will return the way it came. The guy just said if something set to move forward, it will never move backwards. So why if I don't use it, it will return. is to get to the top of the metropole and ask the goddess of prophecy for guidance if there is a king in that castle i sure hope he won't get mad at us for trespassing into his castle. <laughs> Paimon hopes he's not mad. Silence! The one who shall soon stand before you is the ruler of Constellation Metropole. The one who descended after a meteor shower and the protector of order and all the stars in the sky. Be the goddess, the ruler. That's a long yeah. list of titles. We have overall. I bid ye welcome guests uh, from afar. King? Long have I heard of your grand deeds. O oh, fairy, who uh. restored the lifeblood of the forest. O oh, hero, who... Uh, uh, huh? <laughs> Navya! Hold your foul tongue! How dare you utter Her Majesty's name! Uh, so it is her. But you call her a king and she has a mustache now. Mercy, your majesty. Please forgive our transgression. <laughs> nice one, partner. Spectacular improvisation skills. I'd expect no less from you. All right, all right. You can relax now. Allow me to make some introductions. This is the traveler and his trusty companion, Paimon. You are personal friends with her majesty the king? Please. Forgive our grievous mistake. We had no idea. <clears throat> All right. The welcome ceremony is over. Everyone back to your stations. I will personally treat our guests to some royal hospitality. Yes, your majesty. I thought we'd meet her at the next area. And why doesn't she have other clothes? Your majesty... We're most grateful for your... Oh, come on. I've already sent them off. So, anyway, how did you guys get here? We were gonna ask you the same thing! Also, how are you already king of this nation? And where did you get a crown? Oh, wait, don't say it. You just woke up like this, right? Sounds like you've answered your own question. But before I woke up, 
I heard a voice say to me, you are the king of Constellation Metropole. Now go forth and save your city. A similar thing happened to me. Oh, yeah, mm. sorry. You must be the fairy of the Forest of Blessings, right? She knows Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. This is Nilu, a friend that we made during our time in Sumeru. Nice to meet you, Miss Nilu. I'm Navia, the president of Spina di Rosula. If you ever get the chance to go to Fontaine, make sure you come and visit me. I'm based in Poisson. Seems like you're taking this all in stride. Aren't you nervous about getting stuck here and never being able to get back home? Why would I be worried about that? We've faced much bigger problems than this before, and we always pull through. This should be a piece of cake. Besides, life's always full of surprises. You gotta learn to just enjoy it. That sounds like a great outlook on life. You have a very optimistic spirit. Thanks, I'll take that. Honestly, though, it also puts me at ease to find out that you guys are the fairy and heroes that I've been hearing about in this prophecy. <laughs> We're kind of veterans at dealing with prophecies by now, aren't we? Uh, yes. about that, has anything bad happened in the Metropole? We heard about an evil dragon, did it make a mess here too? It sure did. Apparently, for whatever reason, he went for the stars above the city recently. Literally just flew up and started snatching them out of the sky. Luckily, the guards responded quickly and stopped the dragon from taking them back to his lair. Oh. Unfortunately, though, he dropped them before he flew off. Now they're scattered all around the Metropole. I've been out trying to retrieve them, but I only managed to get one of them before you showed up. Oh, I didn't ask yet. What brings you to the Metropole anyway? Oh, Paimon can explain! Dragon hunt the dragon. There's no need for much explanation. Huh. Thanks to the goddess. I see. So, you want to consult the oracle of the goddess of prophecy. Do you know how we can do that, Miss Navia? Well, the goddess's statue is indeed at the top of the castle. I can take you up there. No, let me get that. However, bird I've bush. heard from the citizens here that the goddess hasn't given out any new revelations in a very long time. Yeah, but no, really? it's a special Really? But time. Grandpa Almond told us that he received his prophecy from the goddess. He's really old. Oh, that's probably because the prophecy about the hero of Simulanka has been around for a very long time. But recently, people realized that the goddess didn't reveal anything about what's supposed to happen after peace has been restored. Huh. Okay. Still, can't hurt to try your luck. And maybe you can help me get rid of the invaders while we're at it. Invaders? So the dragon's not your only problem? Right. The forest isn't the only place where strange things have been happening to the residents. Have you come across the gift from the Goddess of Prophecy yet? You mean... The protection magic that stops them from coming to harm? Oh. We saw it in action. Yep, that's the one. Over the past little while, this magic has been triggering far more frequently. We don't know if it's simply because the Metropole has grown a lot more dangerous, or if there's a deeper reason behind it. Some residents find themselves getting stuck in a place and unable to move. Others start repeating the same thing over and over again. Like they're trapped in some kind of loop. But every NPC is always repeating, aim trapped in a loop. If we were to use clockwork toys as an analogy, could it be that the tracks have eroded or the gears have slid out of place? That's exactly right, Nilu. That's basically what's happening. Anyway, some of the monsters outside the city saw this as an opportunity to launch an invasion. Uh, but we didn't see a single monster on our way here. That's because I already took care of most of them over the past couple of days. Of the remaining few, we trapped some of them inside the castle and chased the rest back out of the city. Okay, so to summarize, not only has the magic here gotten all messed up, but the dragons also knocked some of the stars out of the sky, plus there's a bunch of monsters in the city! <sighs> 
Sounds like there's a lot more to fix here than in the Forest of Blessings. Well, <laughs> defeating the dragon and the monster should be straightforward enough. But how do we fix the magic? Supposedly, the goddess has had it all planned out for ages. One of her oldest prophecies says this. Go and push the gear that connects up to the starry sky. When that time comes, I shall dance and return the tracks beneath my people's feet back to the stars in the sky. Huh? But weren't the tracks the gift that she gave to her people in the first place? Does that mean she plans to take the gift back? That's what the prophecy seems to be saying, yes. So, as a result, some people are against turning the gear, despite what the prophecy says, since they fear a future where they no longer enjoy the goddess's protection. But letting this drag on isn't the answer either, is it? No, and I think they know that. But they're just too afraid to take that final, terrifying step. They're still hoping there might be an alternative solution. Now, we could ignore their objections and go turn the gear ourselves. Probably. But... You want to be considerate of their feelings, you want to let them make that choice for themselves. Exactly. The same. You know me well. And that's why you're my partner. I want to get as many people on my side as possible. At the end of the day, this is their city, and they should have the right to decide its future. Ooh, spoken like a true wise king, Navia. I am the boss of Spina di Rosula, after all. This may be my first time as a king, but there are a few similarities between the two roles. Traveler, Paimon, Miss Nilu, would you be willing to lend me your support? With your help, I'm confident we'll be able to find the most frictionless way to resolve the problems plaguing this city. Good thing, boss. It'll be my honor. Uh, thanks, partner. Seriously, like we'd ever say no. We're your friends! No need to ask us so formally in the future. I'm happy to help, too. This is a beautiful city. And just like the Forest of Blessings, I would love to see it return to normal as soon as possible. Ah! Great! As the king of Constellation Metropole, I extend to you my gratitude. All right, everyone, follow me. I'll show you the way to the goddess statue at the top of the Metropole. And stay close. You don't want to get lost in my castle. It's huge. Ah, something with which to commemorate this occasion. It makes sense to get in a place made of paper and origami from a book, but not huh? here. No. What's oh, this? I booked. Wait, this looks like the star I found earlier. I told the guards to place it near the goddess statue. Maybe they ran into some trouble up there. Guess we'd better hurry. <laughs> huh? That's not an entrance. Oh, a little later. Okay, the fairy could just show up and be part of the prophecy, but shouldn't they need a king before? It's a trap. Before Navia got here. Transfixed. Ah, oh, something with which to commemorate this occasion. Most of them are inside. What happened? Can I let them out? But so are my companions. Can you help me? Give it to me. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. 
sure I have an idea here. What greater pleasure is there than... Safe now. Really? Thanks so much. What greater pleasure is there than the unexpected? Guys okay, are frozen. What happens? Two people ran in. They haven't started them too. But there are monsters. Too many monsters. Which me. Let me do that. Still. Let the stars. Alright then. You saved my life. Feels like they really didn't want to give that to us. Yeah, aren't we accompanied by Naga? Uh, am I supposed to keep going here or oh, back there? The only members are possibly barbaric. Thank you. Ah, oh, the baby new here for the frogs. The baby's ready. Now I can perform as per normal. Yeah, see some here. Thank you. Ah, oh, something with which to commemorate this occasion. Mm. Okay, I'll check it. Ah, there's a blue one there. I was following the red one. <laughs> uh. oh. oh, I hit that thing. The star would be great. Not really. So we leave it to you. Another one in the bag. That sure was rough. 
Oh, uh, oh, hang on. Am I supposed to continue here or? Majesty, this conservative radical, he attacked us. Uh. He threw the star from the Astral Garden and even stole the magic thread linking the Oracle Pillars. But just as we were about to arrest him, the goddess's magic activated, and now we can't move. No! Nobody touched the Celestial Gear! What's an Oracle Pillar? You need to use it to pray to the goddess. I'll explain later. First, let's help these guys. Uh, so I think it's gonna open the glue cap. Ah, attacks to spread for super glue. This super glue can produce up to three effective drops of glue. What about all the rest? Just that? Hey! He's giving away! Halt! It's okay. Let him go. But, your majesty! Even if we catch up to him now, we won't be able to change his mind, much less quell the fear that many others like him are feeling. All it would do is turn him further against us. Understood, your majesty. Also, this is the magic thread he was holding from the oracle pillars. Your majesty, what should we... Ah, please give that to the traveler over there. I believe they have some questions for the goddess. Yes, your majesty. this exactly see those oracle pillars over there just use the magic thread to connect them together in a specific pattern and the goddess of prophecy will answer your prayers oh sounds easy enough let's give it a try the ship of the stars uh Uh, let me check. Uh, star is uh, uh, just here. We ignore the details of the center. Oh. To which course of fate do you seek answers, my child of Simulanka? Will you answer all my questions or just one? That's how to live this world, how to defeat the dragon, about Simulanka's future, how to resolve the triple crisis. We can do that anytime. We're getting there. We'll do that step by step by fixing things around. Simulacra's future seems to be most important. Well, how to live this world? The dragon. The Drago. hero from another world, supported by their companions, shall restore peace to this world. 
Metropole's crisis. Go and push the gear that connects up to the starry sky. When that time comes, I shall dance and return the tracks beneath my people's feet back to the stars in the sky. That sounds a bit like killing them. Uh, but yeah, you were useless. Uh, no more so, questions. Miss Navia was right. The goddess of prophecy didn't tell us anything about the future. Fair enough. Guess we'll just have to play it by ear. You want to push the list show gear? Then first, we have to restore the sky back to its original state by putting the stars back in their positions. Uh. Let me do a quick count. All right. Adding in the ones we picked up on the way here, I think that's all of them. Let's go hang really? these stars back up in the sky. I in just the got a sky? bit sidetracked. Uh, how and do we get up there? Oh, <laughs> I got us covered. We will, of course, be taking the Aerial Express. Is that a flying train? Hey, you already took a train that runs on water. Is a flying train really that much weirder? Well, at least the Maritime Express still runs on a track. Oh, come on. Don't worry about it. This train platforms. has been blessed by the Goddess of Prophecy. Its whole purpose is to protect the Metropole skies. It took me a lot of effort to find it, you know. I don't think anyone's used it in, like, mm, a hundred years. A hundred years? Are you sure it's safe? Let's not forget that the Goddess of Prophecy's magic has been going haywire recently. Well, it's not like we have any other options. Unless you want to do the honors, Paimon. Fancy flying up there on your own? <laughs> uh, no, thank you. It's way too high up. Oh, wait, Milu! You've got a feel for how magic works here. Can you do your thing and sense if this train is a real deal? I can try. Hmm. Yes, I can sense traces of magic. But it's different from the kind I felt in the forest, so... I don't know. Okay, fine. Guess there's only one way to find out. That's the spirit. I'll come with you. Miss Nilu, will you be joining us? I think I'll stay behind. That way, if something does go wrong, you'll have someone on the ground to get you some help. That makes sense. If the train does break down, you can make us a giant origami crane to come bail us out. Or if a crane's too difficult, a finch could work. So? Best of luck! Hmm. A finch, huh? I think I know how to fold one of those. Isn't the crane simpler? Since most people do that. She's right. Choo choo! Aerial Express moving out. Wow, it really is flying! What an amazing feeling! I've never been on a flying train before. Oh. Neither have we. Just checking. Oh. That should do it. On to the next location. Okay, she actually stopped. I thought it was because I clicked at that time.
Would she actually say exactly how many? We're finally done. Okay, let's get back now while this train is still working. The card lines for each star we got. It all went smoothly. Yeah, and it was an absolute blast, too. You gotta ride with us next time, Miss Nilu. Huh? Uh, I'm okay. Uh, thanks for. It's not like we don't have gliders. Halt! What do you think you're doing? Get out of my way! What's going on? Your Majesty, there! Let us through! Stay back! It's okay. Let them through. Tuh. Hmm. Y your Majesty, could we please ask you not to turn the gear that connects up to the sky? And why is that? As you have seen, the goddess's gift is very important to us. It keeps us from harm and protects our very lives. Some of us, we just aren't ready to lose that protection. I see. Do they look angry I all understand. The time? Huh? Your Majesty, do you mean. I won't turn that gear. Not until you're ready. What? I've said before that the Metropole belongs to the people, and they should have the right to decide its future. <sighs> but let me ask you this. How do you plan to solve the issues we are currently facing? Well, we'll start by rescuing the people that have gotten stuck. And then we'll find a way to figure out the true cause of this crisis. And have you made any headway on that? The true cause, I mean. Unfortunately, not. We have hey, neither. You little... I'm sorry, my friend, but it's the truth. You have friends and family that have been affected, don't you? That have gotten stuck? Duh. I understand your concerns. But if we let this drag on for much longer, the situation may well get worse. More and more people will be frozen by the goddess's magic. Yes, but if we turn that gear now, all the tracks in this city will disappear. I know this is a hard decision to make, but have you ever thought about why the goddess might have made things this way in the first place? Huh? Why do you think she might decide to take back her gift and stop revealing further prophecies about the future? Are you saying... She has abandoned us? No. Quite the opposite, in fact. What do you mean? The goddess dearly loves this world and all the people of Simulanka. And because she loves you so much, she wants you to be able to choose your own path. <sighs> Every parent hopes their child will have a happy and carefree life. But if they're overprotective, then all they'll manage to do is keep their child trapped. If a mother bird lets her baby ride on her wings for too long, her child will never learn how to fly. Perhaps the goddess of prophecy has always known that one day, she'll have to let go. Children can only become independent if they're allowed to form their own opinions, make their own decisions, and deal with the consequences on their own. Only then will they be able to continue their journey alone, even after their parents are gone. But we've relied on the goddess's protection for so long. We don't know what it's like to go it alone. We don't know if we have what it takes. Are you kidding me? I think you've proven yourselves more than capable of that. What do you mean? You made a call in a time of crisis. And you've come all this way to talk to me. Even the guards couldn't stop you. They that must have something. taken a lot of courage. But we only did it because we were scared. Why you set out on the journey doesn't matter. What matters is that you've proven you can choose your own path. <sighs> My friend, 
I fear our king is right. It is time for us to face our fears. What? But... but we... We can't go on living like this. Living in fear. Look at what it's driven you to do. You threw away a star personally created by the goddess of prophecy herself. <laughs> you once revered her more than any of us. And I think the king is right. She hasn't abandoned us. So, why don't we put our trust in her one more time? <sighs> I don't care anymore. Do what you want. Aw, you left. I'm sorry about my friend. That's just how he is. Always had a terrible temper. Please accept my apology for his impudent behavior. Is it just me, or... Has he accepted the goddess's prophecy? I think so. Not that you'll ever hear him admit it out loud. Your Majesty, please turn the gear that connects up to the sky. So, you've made up your mind? About giving up the goddess's gift? Yes, I've made up my mind. But maybe losing the gift isn't what this is about anymore. Because we've gained something, too. You have given us courage. <laughs> well said. Uh, so I am proud of your decision. Now, gather around, everyone, and join me as we make the night sky of this wonderful city turn once more. The stars hanging in the sky, they're music notes! This entire metropole is a huge music box! That's incredible! <sighs> How do you feel? A little scared and uncertain. But for some reason, I feel a lot more at ease. It's as if... Some kind of huge weight has been lifted from my shoulders. Look uh, figured out any next steps? To be honest, not really. But maybe I can start by having a heart-to-heart -heart with that stubborn friend of mine. I have an idea. If you don't know what to do, why don't you start by helping the people around you? You mean the people who got stuck because of the goddess's magic? I mean anyone and everyone who needs your help. By helping others, you'll eventually find your own path. Trust me, I have experience in this. What kind of experience, your majesty? Hmm, I uh, yes, we'll need a formal organization with a catchy name before we go out and start helping people. Why don't we call it the Spina di Rosula? Sp Spina di Rosula. Ooh, or even the Spina di Rosula di Simulanka. Yeah, that's catchy. Wow, big expansion for the Spina. Moving into other worlds now. Spina di Rosula. <laughs> I like it. It's a great name. Let's do as your majesty suggests. So nice that everybody speaks well, Arabic. then. How about Language I appoint studies. you as the head of the Spina in Simulanka? While I'm off fighting the dragon with the other heroes, it'll be your responsibility to work with the guards and take good care of the people in the Metropole. What? You're planning on fighting the dragon? But no, Your Majesty, you must reconsider! He's right! Your Majesty, you can't! How are you two on the same side all of a sudden? Perhaps your majesty is unaware of this. The great dragon suddenly broke out from the titanium mines one day, 
and tore the end of the world to pieces. After that, it spat out a strange fog that surrounded a whole island. No one knows what lies beyond the fog, and no one knows what has become of that poor island. Before your majesty arrived, we dispatched many soldiers to fight the dragon, but none came back alive. Yikes. Sounds worse than we thought. Isn't that all the more reason for us to go? There could still be guards trapped there, waiting for someone to rescue them. King Navia is right. We cannot simply stand by and watch as the people of this world suffer. <sighs> very well. Though I have not served by your side for very long, your majesty, two days is enough for me to have learned that once your mind is set, any attempts to change it are futile. <laughs> You're a pretty What's good a judge part? of character. Um, he probably didn't mean that as a compliment. Since you're serious about this, I won't try and stop you. There's only one way to reach the end of the world, and that's by taking the Maritime Express. Oh, right! So there's a line going there too? Yes. It was originally built to serve the workers commuting to the Titanium Mines, but it has been abandoned since the Dragon Attack. I'll tell the conductor to wait for you at the platform by the side gate to the Metropole first thing tomorrow morning. You're embarking on an extremely dangerous adventure. Please be careful, your majesty and friends. Oh, thank you for your concern. While I'm gone, I leave the Metropole in your capable hands. Yes, yes your, your majesty. majesty. <laughs> Just call me boss from now on. That's what everyone in the Spina calls me, and it's what I'm used to. The plan for tomorrow is journey across the ocean, make it to the end of the world, and defeat the dragon. Ooh, that's an adventure and a half. Do all storybook heroes have to work this hard? That's what we At least do. we'll get to see some amazing scenery along the way, right? Besides, we'll have each other. It'll be a shared experience that we'll never forget. Plus, we're pretty well equipped for a classic Heroes vs. Dragon story. We got Miss Nilu as our magic caster, and I... I guess I'm the melee warrior who leads the charge? Paimon can definitely hmm. see that. Anyway, those are tomorrow's problems. Right now, all Paimon wants is to eat a proper meal, because worst case scenario, if Paimon ends up getting eaten by a dragon, she wants to do it on a full stomach. And something about... The end of the world doesn't sound like a great place for food options. Hmm. Well, the origami animals in the forest only drink magic tonic. What do the toy people here in Constellation Metropole eat? Vegetable oil and sawdust, I think. Yeah! What did she eat those past two days? Oh. Um. Is this way to work the planet? Ah, it's for here. This way, Miss Nilu. After you. Ah, they're Thank going. you, Miss Navia, but it's fine. I don't mind not riding the Aerial Express. Oh, what is it? Are you scared of heights? Huh? Uh, no, it's not that. It's just... Uh... Then you'll be fine. Yeah, if you feel scared, just hold on to my three. hand. And if you feel really scared, ice. hold on to both of them. You're never gonna see something like this again. Why not just go for it? Live in the moment, have some fun! Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Big circle and... Exhale. All right, I'm ready. Let's go. We're just gonna ditch Kirara here. She's not important for the story. Uh, ah, there. Uh, didn't he say the side of the town? I was expecting the side, not the back. So I guess you. Ah, it'll be over there. 
Let me just wait to eight. See if I will say something. And then I guess I'll take a break here. Good morning, next day. So I guess we're good. Stop here and next time we'll continue. Maybe I can even continue tomorrow. Let me see what do I have. In my role as champ. Okay, but no more points for that. My opinions do not right, matter. So for when I draw my blade, I am but an instrument of Fontaine's law. <laughs> 